Can you hear it back there in the chest freezer? My beer is already fermenting. And it's because I built up a yeast starter. So let me show you my process for building up a yeast starter. And I'm gonna show you what I do so I always make sure I have my favorite yeasts on hand at all times. Let's get brewing. It gets really hot here in the Central Valley in the summertime. So getting yeast shipped here is not only not good for liquid yeast, but super expensive because I need an insulated shipper and four ice packs to go with it. The mailer and ice packs are oftentimes more expensive than the yeast itself. And without a local homebrew shop close by, shipping is often the only way. Having healthy yeast is really important in making good beer. So I learned early on how to build up a yeast starter mainly because insulated shippers and ice packs are no match for a three-day trip at 110 degrees. Making a yeast starter is really quite simple. Here's what you're going to need. Dry malt extract and some yeast nutrient is nice, but don't worry if you don't have any, it'll work without it. A pot, water, and a glass jar or flask, scissors, tinfoil, a funnel, sanitizer, and yep, you guessed it, yeast. And here's what you're gonna do. Step one, you need to calculate your starter size. You can either measure one gram of DME per 10 milliliters of water, that's 100 grams per liter, or do what I do and use an online calculator. The Brewfather app has a great one that's really easy to use. Let me know in the comments if you've got another calculator you're using. Step two, start heating up your water and stir in your DME. You're basically making a tiny batch of beer. Step number three, boil it for 10 to 15 minutes and add your yeast nutrient at the start if you have it. Step four, while it's boiling, sanitize your jar or flask, funnel, and scissors. Step number five, you're gonna wanna cool your wort to around 70 degrees or room temperature. If you have a heat resistant flask, you can pour your wort straight into that and then cool it down in there. If you don't, you can put your pot inside of a fridge or an ice bath and cool it down in there and then transfer it into your jar or flask. And then step number six, you're gonna pitch your yeast and cover it with sanitized foil. Step number seven, put it in a cool dark spot and stir or shake whenever possible for about 24 to 48 hours. Now a stir plate is really handy, but it's totally not necessary. When I first started making yeast starters, I just used my one gallon jar, covered it with foil, and every time I walked by it, I gave it a little shake, and they turned out just fine. You'll start to see signs of active fermentation in your starter, like little bubbles and a small croissant. Just make sure you mix it real well before adding it to your wort. Basically, what I do every brew day is build up a larger starter than I need to. For this batch, I made a 2 liter starter, pitched half in my wort, and then saved the other half for later. Saving yeast for later is as simple as sanitizing a mason jar, pouring in the yeast, and then placing it in your fridge. Make sure to not tighten the lid all the way at first so it can release any extra pressure. After a day in the fridge, you should have a nice layer of yeast on the bottom of your jar. This yeast is best used within about three months, but don't worry if it goes a little longer, just build it up with another starter. All right, so that's it. That's my process for making a yeast starter. I feel like I need a beer. Can you hear my kids upstairs? They're like jumping. It sounds like they're gonna come through the freaking ceiling. Anyway, I kind of feel like I'm sitting here rambling. I hear my kids screaming inside. I'm gonna go. Thank you all for watching. Bye.